Hi there, welcome back to another text and talk, Stellaris Dev Diary 69 Beyond Utopia. So now, Utopia, the launch, everything has been going great. But what, what is beyond Utopia? I mean, uh, <laughs> there's a lot to come. And there's a lot of quality of life improvements they wanted to make. And they call it the Adams Update 1.6. If you're familiar with that, Adams is the one who, yeah... Um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Need I say more? So let's let's say let's see. Douglas Adams. Um, what's in there? No major feature additions. No accompanying paid DLC. Just making things better, making things good, and maybe some little additions to uh, some concepts that make them even better. So. Um, Wiz comes back to Beyond Utopia, to the to the list he created in Dev Diary 50. Um, a number of priorities for us going forward from Heinlein Leviathans. And the list, a lot of things have been crossed out from the list. So um, what is left? What is left? Deeper federations that start out as loose alliances and can eventually be turned into single states through diplomatic maneuvering. This was already... Uh, said in the Dev Diaries before Utopia that this might be an option that will really buffer the diplomatic game. I mean, it's it's going into death like deaths like uh, EU4 or <laughs> Crusader Kings then. If you have these deeper federations, maybe you will have a federal system then. Um, that would be imaginable, at least for me. So that might be... That might be something like the Holy Roman um, Space Empire. How would that be? <laughs> then super weapons, planet killers. That's something um, I've um, encountered first when playing Master of Orion 2, like the planet destroyers, where you can actually destroy a planet. <laughs> Bam, yeah. <laughs> that's a weapon. So that's one of the super weapons. There might be more super weapons like killing... Probably uh, the whole population on a planet or something like that. That might be it. That might be more super weapons or like uh, terraforming a, a planet while people are living there or something like that. That might be more super weapons or even destroying a whole uh, a whole solar system. That would be also something or transforming it into a, a bunch of asteroids. <laughs> So, uh, like a black hole generator, there's, there's like really, really big um, things that can happen with super weapons and planet killers. Then more story events, reactive narratives that give a sense of un an unfolding story as you play. Um, that, is, that is really nice and like uh, giving you some kind of control like that's that's the important thing like if you have a classic role-playing game uh the only thing that after a while can bore you is that it is railroaded too much so it lacks freedom it lacks um creative decisions that you can make so if you if they make reactive narratives in the game that not automatically come in the game then they need to make it as free as in for example crusader kings like there you can like choose which story you take and then you have really a big big number of choices that differ very much from each other so um, that would be nice to have that then more interesting mechanics for pre-ftl civilizations um, that would be nice also an option to start as a pre-ftl civilization maybe in an advanced environment that could be a special kind of challenge it could be very, very interesting. I mean, if the normal empires are something like fallen empires for you, or if maybe everyone starts as a pre-FTL civilization, that would be possible by, by such a thing, like more interesting mechanics. And uh, yeah, then a galactic community with interstellar politics and a space UN. Like, that is uh, definitely something you could see from um, civilization. Like that, that UN thing is something, and it is 
in a way like some of the fallen empires already act like they form some kind of space UN in the I would say middle game and say like fanatic cinephiles for example would stop people from warring around and that could be in the space UN as well and also big federations could could uh, go out to punish people or something like that like it was in the so-called Hanse era too like maybe you could uh, go for a trade embargo against a special federation or something like that so that galactic community sounds pretty interesting then buildable dreadnoughts and titans so you can ha have access to um, ships that are um, comparable to the ships of the unbidden or the other late game crisis <clears throat> like the really really big ships and uh, maybe something like uh, in the culture um, of iron banks <laughs> the man who gave his name to the banks patch uh, you had like general systems vehicles um, that were giant spaceships basically flying orbitals with thousands, millions of people on them, even uh, flying through space. So something like that would be really nice. Like imagine a movable, a movable planet. That would be something too. That would be an expansion of that. That is just, I think, uh, in the in the warships section. And you could maybe have like one Titan per um, <clears throat> per realm or per something. And um, that could be the leader ship <laughs> for your fleet with like some special things and maybe your military leader on board and something like that. That would be really great. And uh, like, I guess an aura spender or something like that. But uh, the other thing, like the movable orbitals would also be something, I mean, you could like retract them from systems into systems that are maybe um, empty and so reform the, the space and time continuum or what, whatever. That would be really great. Then uh, reworking the endgame crisis to be more balanced against each other and the size and state of the galaxy. I mean, on the one hand, I think that's great for balancing the game. On the other hand, I think it removes a lot of very crazy situations. I mean... Of course, it's not fun if you're getting steamrolled by the unbidden, but uh, from time to time, I think it's pretty cool, right? <laughs> Maybe that sh they should be balanced a lot for the lower difficulty grades and then for the higher ones to, to have the ability to have really epic games. They shouldn't be so balanced. <laughs> Of course, they should all be very threatening, as an endgame crisis needs to be a real crisis. <laughs> then, reworks to war. To address the Doomstacks issue, yeah, I mean, that's definitely... It comes down to who can get the, the Doomstack of the other first with his superior Doomstack, and then it's all... Yeah, it's the like the... It's a running around, often, if you can say so, in space. Like, and this... If this is being um, stopped, <laughs> that would be really, really great. Make the strategic and tactical layers of warfare more interesting and less micro-intensive. Um, yeah, you can you can really do micro-intensive fights, and I know that I sometimes focus like giant battleships or specifically the um, the corvettes, but there need to be also more options to make micro possible that makes sense like in a in a sense that you can uh, tell all of your corvettes to focus on a special kind of opponent ship or something like that like set the corvettes to focus on the battleships or something like that that would be really great then deeper mechanics and unique portraits for synthetics yes now that we have the option to become synthetics it's definitely a thing like to to become that then with utopian banks we decide then uh, that rather than divide our focus it was better to have the update and expansion focus almost exclusively on empire customization and internal politics and this is the policy we intend to continue with for future expansions yeah that's 
definitely a thing. I mean, empire customization, in internal politics was a very important issue. So in the next expansion, like there is going to be some kind of aspect that goes really, really deep instead of like a bunch of mixed things that it goes um, all over the place. There's going to be a big improvement or change in one aspect of the game. So this is very good for for once, like it, it as it makes an impact, it changes the game a lot. It is also um, guaranteed that something will happen then that you uh, would expect with some kind of change like that. I would predict that with the expansion patches, like always the the uh, the safe games you had are not playable anymore if you go for the expansion and the expansion patch. I mean, you can play on the old patch, you can finish it there, but um, I think it's pretty sure that if they go for some kind of politics like that to release the DLCs, then you're already running. Um, games will not be able to be continued, like, like the 1.5 save will maybe go for the 1.6 Adams update but for sure not anymore with the 1.7 where there will be probably a new expansion plan so and that's all for today also for me um, they're going for the 1.6 Adams update for more specifics and uh, there is a picture of some of the free graphical content coming in Adams that is basically a free update so you can see that um, that empire screen is changed. It all looks a little better. Background is also new. And I don't know, is that portrait a new portrait? I'm not really sure. Um, but I think that that back screen here of that fallen empire is very nice. Very nice. Before you ask, no, we will not share our technology. Well, um, <laughs> but I will share. I will share what we, uh, what I discover. And uh, for all of you who uh, um, watch this regularly, <laughs> this was a bit late. It was because Easter. I had a family swarm falling in and um, all kinds of things running, and it was just impossible to record something with a house full of people sleeping everywhere. It was just impossible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, yeah, of course I had the the Stellaris LP Utopia running, but just because I had a real massive overnight run of episodes before the Great Invasion came in, <laughs> just to, to get you covered. So if you're interested in more of these news videos, I've linked the playlist in the upper right corner with the I. Um, you can subscribe to the playlist if you want to be um, messaged always not the youtube way but always <laughs> the better youtube way then you need to go to the little bell and then it will send you like an email um that it is that something new is released otherwise it will be kind of chancy if you if you see the update same goes for subscribing if you subscribe like the f the focus of the channel is definitely stellaris so there's more of stellaris here some guides and definitely um the focus is all also the like the news part and uh, like the the let's plays the role play let's plays like we're not going for totally optimized uh, playthroughs we're going for the hard difficulty and we're setting th some ridiculous rules and some ridiculous role plays so it's pretty hard to play hard then <laughs> it is pretty impossible sometimes but and nevertheless, we we want to act in these role plays like um, real people, like the the like for example, the humans on Earth would act, and they they don't always act optimally. I think we can agree to that. So, and that makes things interesting. That makes for great stories, and that's why we play it that way. So, um, thank you for watching and listening. Happy gaming to you. See you soon in another Stellaris Dev Diary. I, I think number 60 is coming out on Thursday, so um, I hope to, to see or hear you then. And uh, 
yeah, if you've got some questions, additions, if you have found out something pretty new, please add it to the comments below and uh, yeah, en enrich our world, enrich the world of others with it. Thank you and uh, happy gaming to you. See you around. This is Immanuel Khan signing out.